Mom always thought I was good looking enough to be a model. She and Dad were always arguing about it. He'd say that it was a waste of money and she'd tell him that he was blind. I can remember how she'd tell people that someday she was going to take me to a company that would make a model out of me and teach my dad a lesson. One day her and her grandma, her mom, decided to teach dad a lesson and took me to one of those companies. Mom made me get all dressed up in a brand new clothes, shirt, pants, socks, and even shoes, everything had to be just perfect for her son the model I remember her saying. She told me that all I had to do was smile and let someone take pictures of me so they could show them to other people who would want to take more pictures of me. I was very confused but I did what I was told which seemed to make mom and grandma very happy. It seemed like a long time before mom got a phone call from the people who took my picture. I heard her talking to grandma about it and she seemed very upset about something. I can't believe it, I heard mom tell grandma over the phone. They must not have tried hard enough. After that day mom kept looking at me kind of funny but wouldn't tell me why. Finally, a couple of days later she said that we had to go back to where they took my picture and talk to them. She ran her fingers through my hair which was longer than most boys and told me how cute I was. I liked the way it felt when mom would play with my hair but it upset me when her and dad would argue about it. He looks like a girl. Dad always insisted. He needs a boy's haircut. Lots of boys have long hair, mom would tell him. He looks cute with long hair and I'm not getting it cut. Mom would then trim my hair a little bit, not enough to make dad happy but enough to stop the argument for a little while. That day at the modeling company mom and grandma talked to the people for a long time while I played with some toys they had. I remember mom being very upset about something and didn't like the way everyone kept looking at me. I heard grandma tell mom that she should think about it real hard because we needed the money. Mom kept looking at me and shaking her head. It's crazy, she told grandma. He's so cute, there must be some mistake. I'm sorry, one of the people from the company told her. We sent them out to every client we have and then double-checked. He just doesn't have the look they want. Unless. Mom said still staring at me in that funny way. It's your decision, they told her. We're just making a suggestion based on his looks. If you're not interested fine but we are willing to pay several hundred per shoot. Several hundred, shoot? The words didn't mean anything to me but they must have been important ones because mom suddenly quit looking at me and turned to the people. Will anyone know? She asked them. I don't want anyone to ever. He's not our first like this, they told mom. No one has ever told anything about them. I think you should give it a try, grandma said. It can't hurt and Jim's company may be closing. I heard mom and dad talking a lot lately about the company he worked for and how they might close. Dad said that if they did he'd have to find a new job and there weren't that many places around us where he could get another job. Mom always told him that we'd work something out but I could tell that dad was very sad. Maybe I could help somehow. Ronnie, would you come over here please? Mom called to me. I want to talk to you about something. How would you like to play a little game of pretend? She asked after I put down the toys I had been playing with and went over to her. You like playing pretend, don't you? Sure, mom, I said quickly. Pretend was one of my favorite games. I love playing pretend. That's good, honey, mom said as she brushed my hair away from my face. These nice people want you to play a game of pretend for them and then take your picture. That sounded okay to me so I told mom that I'd do it. She seemed a little upset and looked over at grandma who was smiling. Go ahead, it'll be okay. Grandma told her. He'll have a good time playing pretend for us. Mom nodded and took me by the hand. Come with me Ronnie, she told me as we walked away. We have to do something special to play this time. Mom took me into a room with lots of closets and told me to take off my shirt, pants, and socks while she looked for something. I didn't understand why I needed to get undressed but I always listened to what mom told me so off went my clothes. A few seconds later mom returned carrying a dress and some other clothes. What's the dress for mom? I asked suddenly feeling a little scared. Mom wouldn't make me wear a dress would she? It's for our game of pretend sweetie, mom smiled as she set the clothes down. 
You're going to pretend to be a girl. I don't want to pretend to be a girl mom. I protested. I'm not a sissy. Of course not Ronnie, you're my little man. This is just pretend remember? Mom said as she gave me a hug. Now hold your arms up please. I did as I was told and mom slipped a funny feeling thing over my arms and head. This is called a petticoat, it will make your dress look much prettier. Mom gently pulled on the petticoat until it was completely on. It felt very smooth and nice but it made me look like a sissy with all the fancy stuff mom called lace on it. Please mommy, I cried. I'll be a god boy, please don't change me into a girl. Oh honey don't worry, mom said softly. We're just going to play pretend, you're not going to be changed into a girl. Are you sure mom? I asked as tears ran out of my eyes. Cross your heart and hope to die? I'm sure Ronnie, mom said kissing my cheek. Cross my heart and hope to die. That made me feel a little better and I let mom finish getting me dressed in a really fancy dress that the girls at school wore for special times. The dress was bright yellow with short, puffy sleeves that you could see right through. You could almost see right through the top of the dress too, at least enough to see the top of the petticoat I wore under it. Mom made me wear a pair of fancy yellow socks with lace on them and a pair of white girl's shoes that she that buckled on. Once I was all dressed like a girl going to a party mom spent a lot of time brushing my hair and tying a yellow ribbon in it to make me look even more like a girl. Once mom was all done she took my hand again and walked me back to where grandma was sitting. He's so pretty! Grandma said very loudly when she saw me. I told you it would work! She said to mom. I feel like a sissy grandma. I told her as mom led me over to where they take my picture. Do I have to do this? You're not a sissy Ronnie dear, grandma told me in a very firm voice. You're a boy who's playing a game of pretend and helping his mom and dad. Helping mom and dad. I couldn't say no if it would help so I did what I was told, held a baby doll, smiled real nice, and had my picture taken. After they had finished taking pictures of me mom took me back to the room and let me change back into my boys' clothes. They felt so different than the dress I had worn, much heavier and not as soft but it still felt good to be wearing pants again. Mom and grandma told me that I shouldn't tell dad about playing pretend that day, they wanted to surprise him later. I didn't mind, after all I wasn't in a hurry to tell dad about my wearing a dress. We went home and I went back to playing with my cars and trucks and tried to forget about how it felt to wear a dress and petticoat that day. One afternoon the phone rang and I heard mom talking like she was very excited. She looked over at me and smiled and told the person on the phone that she'd call them back. She told me to go outside and play then called grandma and started to talk to her. Before I went outside I heard her say something about they finally called, now what, to grandma. Mom called me back inside a little bit later and said that she wanted to talk to me about something really important. Do you remember when you pretended to be a little girl and had your picture taken? The people who took your picture showed to some other people and they want you to play pretend for them. Pretend I'm a girl? I asked. I was starting to feel sad. I didn't want to pretend that I was a girl anymore. Dresses were for girls and sissies and I wasn't either one of them. Mom gave me a hug and a kiss. It would a big help to our family honey but you don't have to if you don't want to. I don't want to be a sissy mom, I started to cry when I thought about wearing girls clothes. Everyone will laugh at me. Did anyone laugh the last time you played pretend? Mom asked, holding me tightly. Grandma and I didn't laugh and I don't remember anyone else laughing. Do you? I thought about it for a minute and realized that mom was right. No one had laughed but they still might have thought that I was a sissy. No, I don't remember anyone laughing. I admitted. But they still might have thought that. That you were a sissy? Mom asked before I could finish. No Ronnie, no one thought that you were a sissy. They all thought that you were a very sweet boy who wanted to be a big help to his family. They were all proud of you. They were proud of me? I asked in surprise. Really proud of me? Absolutely honey, they thought you were such a good boy and very good at playing pretend too. Mom started to play with my hair which always made me feel good. They didn't think that I was a sissy? 
Not at all, mom kissed my cheek to help me stop crying. I'll tell you a little secret, some of them couldn't believe that you were really a boy. That's how well you fooled them. Promise no one will laugh at me? Mom gave me another kiss. I promise. And they won't think I'm a sissy? Mom gave me a hug. Never. She told me. Cross your. Cross my heart and hope to die. Mom promised. I still wasn't really sure I should do it but it would help the family and it made mom and grandma happy. Alright, I'll play pretend again. I promised. Mom pulled me close and hugged me until I thought she was going to break me then she started giving me lots of kisses. A couple of days later mom picked me up after school and took me to grandma's house. She said that we had to practice my pretending and that grandma had some presents for me. I couldn't wait to see what grandma bought me but I still wasn't very interested in playing pretend again and I didn't know what mom meant by practicing. Grandma had a big plate of cookies and a cold glass of milk for me while her and mom went into another room. A little while later they came back and mom took me into the room where I saw a bunch of girls' clothes laying on the bed. These are the presents grandma bought for you, mom told me as she began helping me to get undressed. Aren't they pretty? I thought she bought me something nice, I said as I looked at the dresses and girls' underwear on the bed. Like maybe a new toy. If you do this right you can have all kinds of new toys, mom told me as she helped me put on a fancy petticoat. You could even have that video game you want. Now mom had my interest. I had been begging to get a video game for my birthday, Christmas, anytime, as long as I got the game. Until now mom and dad had always told me that it was just too expensive and that we couldn't afford it. Now mom was saying that I might be able to get it, all I had to do was pretend that I was a girl. I could do that. Are you sure mom? I asked hopefully. It won't be too much money? Mom's face turned into a happy smile. Not anymore Ronnie, she smiled happily. Not anymore. Mom helped me put on a pink party dress with a wide ribbon around the waist, pink socks, and white shoes. She buttoned the dress up in the back then tied the ribbon into a big bow. She sprayed water on my hair then took something called a curling iron to make the ends of my hair curl under. When mom was all done dressing me up and curling my hair I looked just like the pretty girls at school. Ronnie, you look so pretty, grandma said when mom and I came out of her room. I can't believe that you're not really a girl. Thank you grandma, I said politely. I wasn't sure it was a good thing to look so pretty but mom and grandma seemed to think so. Mom made me look just like the girls at school when they get all dressed up. I noticed that honey, you look very nice. How do you like the way those clothes feel? I didn't know what to say to grandma. It felt so different wearing a dress instead of pants and I did sort of like the way the petticoat felt but what would mom and grandma think? Mom swore she wouldn't think I was a sissy or anything so I decided to tell the truth. It's different grandma, I said watching her face to see if she might be getting ready to laugh. It feels funny not to have long pants on but I kind of like wearing a petticoat. I told you he'd like it. Grandma looked at mom. He's going to do just fine and make lots of money too. Do you like wearing these clothes Ronnie? Mom asked. Please let me know if you'd rather not do this okay? It's okay mom, I smiled and swished my skirt back and forth like I saw the girls at school do. Boy did that feel good. I really don't mind. Grandma noticed how I swished my skirt and smiled down at me. That petticoat feels pretty nice against your legs doesn't it? Yes it does, I admitted while turning bright red. It's so smooth and nice. Girls sure are lucky to be able to wear them. You can wear them now too Ronnie, Grandma told me. You have two of your very own now you know. All of those in my room belong to you. Me? I was so confused. I liked the way the clothes felt but what was I going to do with a bunch of girls clothes? What am I going to do with them grandma? I can't wear them to school or anything? No sweetheart, mom laughed. You can't wear them to school but you can and we'll wear them anytime we go to play pretend. You'll have to look like a girl if you don't want anyone calling you a sissy. Oh, okay I guess. Mom kind of made sense. If people thought I was a boy in a pretty dress they might just call me a sissy. 
You can also visit me anytime your parents let you and play pretend, Grandma suggested. It would be a lot of fun to have a little girl around the house again. I was wondering what it would be like to visit Grandma and wear dresses and petticoats when Mom interrupted me. Come on, Ronnie, we have some other outfits for you to try on before we leave. Back in Grandma's room, Mom helped me out of my new dress and started to take off my petticoat. Do I have to take it off, Mom? I pleaded. It feels so nice. Mom promised me that I could wear it again sometime, after all it was my dress and my petticoat now, but it wouldn't look right under the next dress she wanted to try on me. I reluctantly held up my arms so Mom could take my petticoat off me then sat down and took off the pretty shoes and socks I was wearing. Put these on, Mom said as she handed me a pair of girls' underpants. I'll bet that you'll like the way they feel as much as your petticoat. I stared at the soft, smooth, pink underpants too afraid to change out of my Superman underpants. What's wrong, honey? Mom asked, noticing my hesitation. They'll feel a lot nicer than your boy's underpants. But what if they change me into a girl? I asked. Maybe girls' underpants could do that to a boy. Nothing is going to change you into a girl, Mom laughed. They'll just feel nice and silky like your petticoat, that's all. I was still worried but since mom said it was alright I took off my boy's underpants and pulled on the girl's underpants she had given me. She sure was right about how they'd feel soft and silky just like my petticoat, they felt so much nicer than my superman underpants felt. I ran my hands over my rear end. These feel really nice mom but why do I have to wear girl's underpants just to play pretend? Grandma and I thought it would help if you felt more like a real girl when you played. Wearing panties like those under your dresses will make you feel less like a boy. Mom explained as she handed me a short, silky thing to put on. What's this? I asked. It looked sort of like an undershirt without arms and a big hole for my neck. It was just as silky as my new underpants and had lots of that fancy lace stuff around the bottom. Why can't I wear one of my petticoats? Petticoats are for really fancy dresses like your party dresses. This is a half slip for under regular dresses and skirts. Mom explained all about petticoats, full slips, half slips, and what they were for. I had no idea what girls wore under their dresses before but now I kind of wished that I had been a girl so that I could wear nice things like slips and petticoats. Are you sure I'm not going to turn into a girl mom? Positive honey, mom held my hand so I could step into the slip. But it's really important that people think you're a girl okay? When can we tell daddy mom? He'll be real surprised, won't he? Not until I say so, Ronnie. And yes, he will be very surprised. Mom laughed while she pulled a plaid dress over my head and buttoned it in the back. Trust me, your father will be amazed to see his new daughter. Soon I was all set to see grandma in a cute plaid dress like girls wore to school, white knee socks, and shiny black shoes mom called Mary Jane's. Mom brushed my hair back into a ponytail and tied it with a ribbon that matched one of the colors in my dress. I liked the way the slip felt against my legs and my new panties were so comfortable that I was going to ask mom to let me wear them home. You're just as pretty in a school dress as you are in a party dress. Mom told me as she showed me off to grandma again. Isn't he just the prettiest little girl mom? She asked grandma. Certainly. Grandma said proudly as I walked into the room. I told you he'd make a pretty girl, didn't I? Mom stared at me as though she was very happy about something. Yes, you did. I just didn't think he'd enjoy it so much. Mom and Grandma made a big fuss over me and showed me different ways to stand and sit as I tried on a couple of other dresses. This was important, they said, to keep anyone from guessing who I really was while I was playing pretend. I listened to what they said and did such a good job that mom let me wear my panties under my boy's pants when we went home. I couldn't wait for my first chance to play pretend. The very next week mom surprised me after school one day by telling me that I was going to play pretend that day. We hurried over to grandma's so I could get dressed in my prettiest pretend clothes while mom fixed my hair. This time mom gave me a pair of yellow panties to wear which had the name Chrissy written in a circle of lace. Who's Chrissy mom? I asked as I took off all of my boy's clothes. How come I'm wearing her underwear? You're Chrissy honey, mom said while brushing my hair. 
We can't call you Ronnie when you look so pretty so grandma and I have decided to call you Christina Marie instead. That's a pretty name, I told her as I pulled on the panties. There's a girl in my class named Chrissy, she's real pretty. I'll bet you're prettier than she is, and now you can wear pretty dresses and panties just like she does. I had to think about that. It was sort of fun to wear girls' clothes, actually I thought it was a lot more fun than wearing boys' clothes, but was I really prettier than Chrissy Adamic, the prettiest girl in my class? How can I be prettier than her mom? She's a girl and I'm not. That doesn't mean a thing Chrissy, mom insisted. Just because you're a boy doesn't mean you can't be pretty if you want to be. When you're all dressed up you're so much prettier than Christina Domic. A couple of days later I had my first chance to play pretend for some strangers. I was a little bit scared when we walked into the building because I wasn't used to wearing girls clothes around strangers. Mom held my hand real tight and told me that everything was okay and that I looked so pretty which calmed me down a lot. Playing pretend wasn't hard at all that day. All they wanted me to do was to wear a couple of really pretty dresses, smile and let them take my picture. Sometimes I'd have to sit a certain way or hold my head and hands the way they told me to but I thought it was a lot of fun and I sure fooled everyone because they kept calling me Chrissy. After that I was real busy playing pretend a couple of times every week. The people at the modeling company told me that they found lots of people who liked the way I looked, they said that I had a very cute face that made pretty clothes look even prettier when I wore them. I remember that mom was so happy that she decided to buy me the video game I had wanted if I'd go shopping with her as Chrissy. I would have done anything to get that game so it didn't bother me at all to wear a school dress, socks, and shoes to the mall. After all it had already been almost a month since I started playing pretend and I'd had my picture taken in dresses, pants, nightgowns, and even bathing suits. Playing pretend was so easy. Before I got my game the mom took me to the girls department and let me try on all kinds of pretty dresses and even let me pick out some pretty panties, slips, and petticoats for myself. We'd keep them at grandma's house so that dad wouldn't guess our surprise and once in a while I'd spend the weekend with her. Weekends at grandma's were so much fun, it was a whole weekend of playing pretend. Mom would drop me off after school and I'd rush into a bedroom grandma kept for me and put on a pretty party dress. I had lots of clothes to choose from since most of the companies that I played pretend for let me keep the clothes I wore when they took my pictures. Once in a while I'd wear a school or play dress but I didn't like them nearly as much as my party dresses with fancy petticoats. Grandma would introduce me to all of her friends as her granddaughter and sometimes I'd even play house or dolls with other little girls who lived nearby. Sometimes we'd go to my room and spend time playing dress up. My girlfriends always liked doing that because of all the pretty clothes I had. During the weekends at grandma's I had a lot of work along with playing with my girlfriends. Grandma always told me that there was a lot of work to being a model, it wasn't enough to just smile and look pretty, she said. I had to learn how to pose just right for the camera and since everyone thought I was a girl she wanted to make sure that I didn't do anything to make people think I wasn't. Grandma taught me how to sit properly in a dress, party dresses took a lot more work than school and play dresses to keep people from seeing up my dress, how to dress myself, and especially how to do things like a girl. I couldn't throw a ball the way I used to since that wasn't how girls did it and I wasn't supposed to run the same way since girls ran differently than boys did. I was starting to get tired of playing pretend after a couple of months. I couldn't climb trees anymore or do most any of the other things that I liked to do because mom and grandma were afraid I'd get a mark somewhere that would show up on my pictures. They started treating me more and more like a girl every day and wouldn't let me have any fun. Halloween was always one of my favorite times. I just loved wearing scary costumes, trick or treating, and all of the candy I would get. That was before I started playing pretend though. I started to bug mom about a costume a week before my class Halloween party. I had seen a goblin costume that I thought would be scary enough to frighten even the boys in my class but mom wouldn't let me get it. That time she wanted me to be a girl for Halloween. But mom, I can't go to school in a dress. Everyone will laugh at me and call me names, I pleaded with her to let me go as a goblin but mom refused. Either I go as a girl or I didn't get a costume at all she told me. All the other boys talked about their costumes but when they asked me I told them that mom hadn't decided yet. 
I considered pretending to be sick on Halloween but I didn't think mom would let me stay home even if I was sick. She wanted me to go to school in a dress and it didn't matter what happened, on Halloween I knew I'd be wearing a dress. Mom woke me up early on Halloween since she said it was going to take a little longer to get my costume all ready. I wanted to pull the blankets over my head and stay in bed when she showed me what she had picked out for me to wear my pink party dress with the sheer top and sleeves. Of course she had a pair of my pink panties and a petticoat for me to wear with my dress. For the first time since I started playing pretend I didn't want to put on my panties. Wearing a dress and petticoat would be bad enough but what if someone saw my panties? Finally wearing a pink dress with a big bow in the back with frilly pink socks and a ribbon in my hair mom gave me one of my girls coats to wear and we were off to school. I kept hoping the car would break down or we'd get a flat tire but everything worked just fine and soon we were at school watching the other kids going in. Mrs. Tripman, my teacher, was standing at the door when we walked in. She looked at me and smiled then looked at mom. Ronnie? She asked as she looked at my dress and shoes. Is that you? I thought it would be cute to see what he would have looked like if he'd been a girl, mom smiled at Mrs. Tripman. I borrowed some things from a little girl my mother knows. What do you think of my little girl? He's adorable. Mrs. Tripman couldn't take her eyes off of me. It's almost a shame that he's a boy. Mom smiled at me and winked. Isn't it? Go in and sit down, Ronnie. I want to talk to your teacher for a few moments. She gently shoved me into the room of kids who were staring at the new girl. I saw her and Mrs. Tripman looking at me and smiling just before Mom left. Not thinking I smoothed my skirt as I sat down and quickly noticed the stare from a girl who sat next to me. Big mistake I thought, I shouldn't have thought about smoothing out my skirt. Hopefully the girl wouldn't mention it though. I walked over to where one of my friends was playing with a fire truck. He was wearing the goblin costume that I wanted. Hi Billy, nice costume. That's what I wanted my mom to buy for me. Billy looked up and saw me standing there in my dress. How come you're wearing a dress, Ronnie? Are you a girl now? Just for Halloween, I tried to act disgusted. My mom wanted to see what I'd look like as a girl. You sure are pretty, Billy said with a big smile. Do you like being a girl? I'm not a girl, Billy. I was so mad that I stomped my foot and put my hands on my hips like grandma had taught me. Don't call me a girl. Then why are you wearing a dress? Besides, only girls stomp their feet and stand like that. Billy shot back at me. That's what my sister does when she gets mad. Mine too. I turned and saw Danny, another one of my friends, staring at me. How come you're a girl now, Ronnie? I'm not a girl. By now I was really mad. Even my friends thought that I'd suddenly turned into a girl just because I was wearing a dress for Halloween. It's my costume dummy. Before we had a chance to start fighting Mrs. Tripman asked us all to go to our seats so she could start class. This time I was more careful and didn't smooth out my skirt when I sat down. Maybe that would convince my friends that I wasn't really a girl. Mrs. Tripman told all of us how cute we looked and how good our costumes were saying that she was sure we'd get lots of candy when we went trick or treating that night. I wanted to hide under my chair though when she walked over to my chair and told the rest of the kids that they would have to be extra nice around me today because of the way I was dressed. Ronnie's mom borrowed his pretty dress from a little girl she knows and we wouldn't want it to get messed up, okay? Yes Mrs. Tripman, the whole class answered as they stared at me. Some of the boys were about to laugh until Mrs. Tripman scolded them saying that my costume had been my mom's idea and not mine. After all that one of the girls still had to ask her if I was a girl now. When it came time for recess I stood up and got into the boys' line to go out to the bathroom. I heard a lot of giggling from the girls and then a girl named Judy came up and whispered in my ear that my dress had gotten folded over and my petticoat was showing. I quickly reached back and pulled my dress back down but the damage had been done. We all followed Mrs. Tripman out to the bathrooms where the girls stood in a line by the girls' bathroom and the boys did the same next to our bathroom. Before anyone could move though Mrs. Tripman walked up to me and asked me to follow her. I was horrified when I realized that she was taking me to the girls' bathroom. I think it would be best if you use this one Ronnie, she said gently urging me towards the door. We don't want to see your pretty dress get messed up in the boys' room. 
With no other choice I dashed into the girls' bathroom while both the boys and girls giggled outside. I was going to be really mad at mom for doing this to me. After recess we went back to have playtime but as soon as I started walking towards the boys Mrs. Tripman stopped me. I'm sorry but your mom asked me to keep you away from the boys at playtime to keep from messing up your pretty dress. Now I was really upset and began to cry. I didn't want to wear this stupid dress for a costume and it was causing me all kinds of trouble. Why couldn't mom have let me be a goblin? Don't cry sweetie, Mrs. Tripman handed me a tissue as she led me over to the girl's side of the room. Tomorrow you'll be back with your friends and everything will be okay. Today though your mom wants you to play with the girls. The girls seemed happy to have me as a friend and quickly accepted me into their group giving me a baby doll to hold. Soon we were busy playing house, pretending to be mommies taking care of their babies. It was just like playing with my girlfriends at grandma's house and I soon forgot all about not playing with the boys. When mom picked me up that afternoon I was really mad but she got me talking about playing house and being a mommy and I soon forgot how mad I really was, especially when we stopped for ice cream. Isn't this fun Chrissy? Mom asked as we waited to get our ice cream. Today you can be a pretty little girl and no one will laugh at you. We can even go shopping for a new game since you were such a good girl at school today. I had a great time laughing and talking to mom about school, how silly the boys were, how much fun I had with the girls, and how nice it felt to spend a whole day in my party dress. We went shopping and bought me a new game and even bought me a new dress. Everyone smiled at me and treated me like a girl, even a few friends of mom's who knew that I was really Ronnie. It was so fun! I had a lot of pretending, mom calls it modeling now, to do and I didn't have much time for my old friends. It didn't matter too much though ever since mom stopped me from doing the things I used to do. Mom always told me that a model makes money with her face and if I had a broken nose I wouldn't be worth much as a model anymore. There wasn't much chance of breaking my nose though by learning to walk with a book on my head or learning how to set my own hair. Mom insisted that I learn how to do those things though saying that I would make a lot more money if I could learn to do those things. Mom said that the more like a girl I looked and acted the more money I'd make so I walked with a book on my head, I learned to curl and grandma taught me how to put nail polish on to make my fingers and toes look even prettier. It seemed like mom and grandma might be trying to turn me into a girl even though mom said that couldn't happen. They kept asking me to do goofy things which they said would either make me a better model or make it easier for me to get ready for a modeling session as they called it. I had to quit wearing boys underpants and wear my panties so that it would be one less thing to change when I had to model. I wore clear nail polish on my fingernails so that my nails wouldn't break and be ugly looking when I had to model and I even had to have something called bath oil in the water whenever I took a bath so that my skin would stay pretty looking too. I don't know how mom kept my modeling a secret from dad for so long but she did it. He never noticed my wearing panties or nail polish and since mom ran my bath water he never had a chance to see her put the bath oil into the water. I guess he was too worried about his job to bother with what I was doing. It was Christmas before mom finally let dad in on our secret. Grandma was at our house for Christmas dinner and everyone was in a really good mood. Dad was amazed to see that he got what he wanted for Christmas, a big screen television. We can't afford this TV, Dad told Mom looking very sad and upset. I knew how much he wanted that TV. We have the house payment, the two cars, and all the other bills. Mom gave him a big kiss. My car is already paid off, we're two years ahead in the house payments and we still have $5,000 in our savings account. Dad seemed even more surprised than I was when I found out what my Halloween costume would be. How could we? I know what I'm making and it's barely enough. Remember how I said Ronnie was cute enough to be a model? Mom asked with a big grin. I was right all along. He's been modeling since school started and he makes more money than you. I never thought you were serious. Dad still looked amazed. You never told me about it. You didn't want to believe me, luckily for us mom did. But what about school and everything? Dad asked starting to calm down. How does he? No problem, mom shrugged. The companies know he has to go to school so they schedule the sessions for afterwards or weekends. He's up to three sessions a week at $1,000 a session. Dad looked like he was going to fall over. 
$1,000 a session, times three is $3,000 a week. Mom told him as she helped him sit down. I paid cash for the TV, by the way. Dad seemed to be feeling a lot better. My son a model, he said proudly. Wait until the guys at work find out. I wouldn't be in a hurry to say anything about it if I were you, Mom looked at Dad in an odd way. There is one little catch. Three thousand a week and there's a catch? What could possibly be so serious that I can't tell anyone? He's not doing any of that kiddie porn stuff? Dad suddenly got very angry. Calm down, Jim, Grandma told him. It's not porn but maybe it would be better if you saw what Cindy means. Why don't you take Ronnie into his room and get him ready? She told Mom. Mom agreed and we hurried off to my room to get me ready for Dad. Grandma had brought over a dark green velvet dress that I picked out for Christmas and I had a couple of slips and panties hidden in the back of my closet for wearing when Dad wasn't home. This was going to be special, not just because of showing Dad, but it would be the first time I wore tights instead of socks. I pulled on the prettiest pair of panties I had, green with a bunch of lace ruffles on the back, then Mom helped me put on a pair of white tights decorated with red and green stuff like reindeer and Santa Claus. I pulled on a pretty white slip with lots of lace on the bottom then slid my dress over my head and let Mom zip me up. She took her time and fixed my hair so that it curled over at the ends and then tied a pretty green ribbon in it to match the color of my dress. I buckled on a pair of shiny black shoes and holding Mom's hand went to show Dad how pretty I was. Jim, Mom said as we walked into the living room. This is our daughter Christina Marie, the model. Dad looked at me and then started to shout. You let him wear dresses and have his picture taken? What's wrong with you? Are you sick or something? Mom started to cry. It was the only way Jim, he wasn't anything special as a little boy but as a little girl he's the prettiest thing they've ever seen. I don't care how pretty he is. Dad screamed. I'm not going to have my son dressed up like a sissy. A sissy? Me? I got really mad at Dad. I'm not a sissy, I'm just playing pretend, that's all. In a dress? Dad shouted. Cindy, what in the world were you thinking? Grandma interrupted Dad. She was thinking of all the bills she could barely afford to pay on what you make. She was thinking of losing the house and the cars. She was thinking of you losing your job. She was thinking of you stupid. She yelled. Now you can apologize or I'll end his modeling right now. You'll lose that TV along with your car and possibly the house. Is that what you want? I thought that for the first time ever my dad was going to cry. He didn't say anything for a very long time but he finally seemed to shake his head and act as if he had trouble swallowing. I shouldn't have called you a sissy Ronnie, I'm sure you were only trying to help. Dad pulled me over to him and held me tight. Can't you understand that I'm really concerned about him? He asked Grandma. If anyone ever knew that he modeled girls' clothes. But no one knows Jim, Mom stepped over to me and Dad and put her arms around us both. The agency that does the booking isn't going to say anything and lose all of the money they've been making. Mom and I aren't about to spill the beans and I don't think you will either. No. I'm certainly not going to brag about my son the pretty model, Dad sighed. With the way things are going at work soon there won't be anyone to tell if I wanted to. All the more reason to let Ronnie keep modeling. Grandma told him. It's not hurting anything and you really can't afford to have him stop. But what about him? Dad nodded towards me. Has anyone ever asked how Ronnie here feels about wearing girls' clothes and having to pretend that he's really a girl? Mom asked me lots of times Dad, I piped in even though I wasn't sure they wanted me to. I'm helping the family and it's okay, really it is. Dad stared at me carefully before he asked me to look him in the eye. Tell me the truth Ron, do you feel silly standing here in a pretty dress? I did at first Dad, but that was before I fooled everyone into thinking that I'm a girl. Now I'm used to wearing girls' clothes and I really like the way they feel. I raised my skirt just a little bit to show off my pretty tights. This is the first time I've ever worn tights but I like wearing them just as much as I like wearing my petticoats and panties. I tried to tell you that much Jim, Grandma had a big smile on her face as if she was happy about something. Now are you satisfied? 
but petticoats and panties? Dad asked still seeming upset. Is that all necessary? Mom didn't bother answering Dad for some reason, she just left the room and came back with the album of my pictures from different modeling sessions. Dad shook his head as he looked at pictures of me in party dresses, sundresses, girls' pants, tops, nightgowns, and slips. He wears girls' underwear as part of his costume. Mom explained as Dad examined the pictures. He's supposed to be a pretty little girl and pretty little girls do not wear Superman underpants, they wear pretty, frilly, nylon panties. Dad looked at me sadly. Are you sure you don't mind? No, Dad. I smiled and swished my skirt back and forth. It's fun. Dad did his best to smile. I guess I'm going to have to get used to having a pretty daughter around now and then. Any chance of catching a ball game during the summer like we used to? I threw my arms around Dad and hugged him tight. Sure, Dad. I still like baseball. Everything's going to be fine, Jim, Mom said as she sat next to me and gently pulled my dress down. You may even like having a daughter. Dad just shook his head as if Mom were crazy or something but he pulled me onto his lap where I stayed for most of the evening. It felt nice to have Dad think that I was pretty and it made me special when he said that I was going to be Daddy's girl. I was a very popular model and was making lots of money which made Mom and Dad so happy that they bought me my very own television to play video games on. I didn't have to go to Grandma's house to wear my pretty clothes because now that Dad knew I could wear dresses at home whenever I wanted to. Everything was so nice and everyone seemed so happy but once in a while I missed being able to play games with the other boys at school or at home. Since dad knew all about my modeling now mom started to treat more and more like a girl at home. She wanted me to wear dresses more often and called me Chrissy even when I wasn't dressed up. I asked for a baseball bat and glove for the next summer but I got another lecture about how I could get hurt or mark up my pretty face. I wasn't supposed to call my father dad anymore, instead I had to call him daddy which even he seemed to like. Instead of bringing home trucks and cars for me to play with daddy started to bring home stuffed animals and even dolls for my dresser. I couldn't play outside with my friends because I might get hurt and I couldn't play with them in my room now that it had dolls all over the dresser. My bed had pretty sheets with puppies and kittens on them, a closet filled with pretty dresses, and girls underwear in all of my dresser drawers. Sometimes I even forgot that I was a boy when I played with my toy makeup set. Just after school ended for the year, the company where dad worked finally closed and dad didn't have a job anymore. I heard them talking a lot, but whenever I came into the room, they always stopped until I left again. One time I heard mom say something about moving and a different school for me. Then dad said something about it wouldn't be right. I wished that I knew what was going on. Summer was a busy time for me that year. Mom had modeling sessions set up nearly every day which didn't give me much time to play. Of course I had more video games than any other kid I knew, my own television, a new bicycle, plenty of baby dolls to use when I played with my girlfriends at grandma's and of course more and more pretty outfits. One day mom gave me a big surprise, I was going to spend two whole weeks on vacation at grandma's house while she helped dad look for a new job in another town. For two weeks I was going to play dolls, jump rope, and house with my girlfriends. Since I hadn't been to grandma's since the end of school I missed playing with my girlfriends and didn't mind at all that I'd be a girl for two straight weeks. I wore my prettiest sundress the day I went to grandma's, it was pink with little yellow and blue flowers and lace ruffles at the bottom and underneath I was wearing a pair of my newest panties with the day of the week on them. Mom told me that I didn't need to wear a slip but I wore a pretty half slip just because it felt so good when it rubbed against my bare legs. Grandma was always so nice to me. As soon as I got out of Dad's car she gave me a big hug and told me how pretty I looked. You didn't bring any of Ronnie's clothes along did you? She whispered as she hugged me. Not a single thing Grandma. I excitedly whispered back after giving her a kiss. I can't wait to see what it's like to be a girl all the time. I'm going to make sure that you have a vacation you'll never forget, young lady. Grandma teased. I'm going to turn you into a girl and I might not let you change back again. What do you think of that? I think it's going to be so much fun, Grandma. I guess Mom and Dad had done a good job of treating me like a girl because I was so excited over the idea that Grandma was going to make a girl out of me. 
I'd been modeling girls' clothes and spending a lot of time as a girl at home but I couldn't wait to see what grandma was going to do to me. I didn't have to wait long to find out what grandma planned because as soon as dad drove away grandma took me to a nearby mall for a shopping trip to remember. We have to hurry up Chrissy, I've made an appointment to get your hair and nails done. I want to see just how pretty we can make you look. My heart started to beat faster than it ever beat before. You mean in a real beauty shop? Just like a real lady? Well of course it's a real beauty shop Chrissy, and just because you're a little girl there's no reason that you can't still enjoy being treated like a lady. The ladies at the beauty shop were very nice to me and told grandma that she could go shopping while they turned her little granddaughter into a pretty young lady. Grandma made sure they understood everything that they were supposed to do to me then kissed me and said she'd be back for her beautiful granddaughter. The ladies sat me down in a chair and started to work on my hair, shampooing it, trimming it, and then setting it in curlers after they put some funny smelling stuff on it. While I waited for my hair to dry two other ladies glued things onto my fingertips to make them look longer then started putting nail polish on my fingers and toes. By the time my nails were done my hair was dry enough to take out of the curlers and style. It took a lot of time for the lady doing my hair to get it just right but finally she let me see what I looked like in a mirror. I knew the girl in the mirror was me because we were wearing the same dress but my hair looked lighter and so pretty with lots of curls. While I was staring at the pretty girl wearing my dress two ladies came up to me and put a mark on each of my ears. I wondered what they were doing when they each picked up some type of gun and held them to my ears. I heard a popping noise and then felt my ears starting to burn. Stay calm Chrissy, one of the ladies told me as I reached for my ears. They'll hurt a little for a minute but now you'll be able to wear pretty earrings just like your mom and grandma. I saw the cute little gold balls sticking to my ears and suddenly realized that they had pierced my ears. Maybe I should have been upset but the longer I stared at the gold balls the happier I got. Mom and grandma both had pierced ears and they wore very pretty earrings, now I was just like them and would be able to wear pretty earrings too. Grandma was thrilled with the way I looked when she got back. I told you this was going to be a special vacation Chrissy, what do you think so far? I couldn't say just what I felt, I had to show grandma so I jumped up and threw my arms around her neck, I love you grandma. I shouted as I gave her a kiss. I love you too Chrissy, I'm so glad you like the way you look. I love it grandma. I shouted out as I rushed back to stare in a mirror. I'm so pretty. Grandma had another surprise for me when we got back to her house. The bedroom I used when I stayed there had been completely fixed up since the last time I stayed with grandma. Instead of the old bed and furniture that was in the room there was now a pretty bed with four posts and a pink canopy that perfectly matched the sheets and curtains. A new dresser was filled with pretty clothes inside and covered with dresser dolls on the top. Next to the dresser was a smaller piece of furniture that grandma called a vanity. It had a mirror and a chair and was covered with all the different kinds of makeup just like big girls wore. My new bed had ruffled sheets and brand new baby dolls taking their naps on the pillow. Grandma opened the closet to show me how neatly all of my dresses were arranged and now there was a pair of matching dressy shoes under each dress. When Grandma opened one of the drawers in my nightstand I saw that she had bought me several pairs of tights and even some stockings like big girls wore. I couldn't stop myself from crying. I thought you'd enjoy spending time as a girl Chrissy, Grandma said quietly. Don't you like the pretty clothes and new furniture? Oh Grandma, I love them. I cried. They're all so beautiful, I can't believe this is all for me. This is all for the prettiest little girl I know, Grandma told me as we hugged. I want my granddaughter to enjoy being a girl. I know your mom and dad don't let you play boys games anymore so I'm going to make it up to you by showing you how much fun it is to be a girl. Grandma kept her promise to make me think of myself as a girl. I wore pretty clothes all day long, played with my girlfriends, and at night I went to sleep wearing pretty nightgowns and cuddling my favorite baby doll in a bedroom that no boy would have wanted to be caught dead in. After my friends and I had to go home in the evening grandma would teach me how to take care of my hair and nails. At first I practiced on her hair but soon I was able to set my hair into many pretty styles and apply nail polish as well as some teenage sisters of my girlfriends. Grandma often let my friends sleep over and I even got to sleep at their houses a few times. 
We'd stay up late, have pillow fights, or if the sleepover was at grandma's my friends and I would play dress up in some of my pretty dresses. I guess she must have known what these sort of things were going to do to me because soon I forgot all about being Ronnie, I was Chrissy her pretty granddaughter. Two weeks later when my parents came to pick me up they found a very sad little girl waiting for them. I was stretched my bed crying when my parents came into the room. What's wrong Chrissy? Mom asked as she gently rubbed my back through my sundress. Didn't you have a good time with grandma and your friends? Oh mommy, I had a wonderful time, I said even as I continued to cry. I got to play with all of my girlfriends and grandma got my ears pierced and bought me these pretty earrings, I brushed back my hair to show off my earrings. They're very pretty Chrissy, dad told me as he gave me a hug. But if everything was so nice why are you so sad? I guess it cause I had such a good time that I don't want to leave. I sobbed as dad hugged me tight to his chest. Mom brushed back the stray hair that had fallen into my face. What if we let you stay another two weeks Chrissy? Would you mind spending a couple of more weeks as a girl? She asked. I'm not sure, I told mom glancing over at my dad. Maybe I should go back to being Ronnie? Dad caught my looking at him and kissed me on the cheek. If you want to spend some more time as Chrissy, it would be fine with us honey. Mom and I still have a few things to get done before we move. It would be a big help to us if you could spend a little more time with Grandma. But I'd have to keep pretending that I'm a girl dad. I reminded him just to make sure he understood. Dresses and dolls and stuff like that. I'm sorry, I forgot about that, Dad winked at Mom. You really hate pretending to be a girl and having to wear dresses and play with dolls. I guess you'll have to come with us Ronnie, Mom sighed. It's going to be awfully boring though. Are you sure you couldn't spend just a little more time as a girl? I thought about it for a few seconds. If I went with my parents I'd have to quit wearing all the pretty new earrings grandma bought me and I wouldn't have my friends to play with. I wouldn't have my baby dolls, or my playhouse, or be able to wear any of my new nail polish. Of course I would get to spend all of my time with mom and dad looking at houses. Okay, but you're sure you don't mind dad? I knew that I wanted him to say that it was okay but I didn't want to admit it. I had a lot of fun pretending to be a girl but it still didn't seem right. Not only wouldn't I mind Chrissy, I bought you a little something that will prove it. Dad reached into his pocket and pulled out a small case. He smiled and handed it to me to open. I love presents but I never had one before in a box like the one Dad had given me. It looked like the ones he gave to mom and I couldn't understand why he'd give me something like that. When I opened the box I couldn't believe my eyes. Inside was a gold chain with an ornament that said daddy's girl hanging from it. Daddy's girl? I asked wondering what the necklace could possibly mean. Daddy's girl, dad said firmly. I just wanted to show you how proud I am of you and tell you that I think you're the sweetest daughter ever. Girl, daughter? I was so confused. Mom helped fasten the necklace around my neck while Grandma went for her camera. Before I knew what was happening the pictures were taken and Mom and Dad were kissing and hugging me. I fingered my new necklace and looked up at Dad. You mean you like me pretending to be a girl? Dad shrugged his shoulders and put his arms around me and Mom. I thought it was a little odd at first Chrissy but I don't know what we would have done without the extra money your modeling job gave us. Besides, you look so pretty that I could almost forget that you're a boy. Dad's comments sort of hurt me. I had always wanted to make him proud of me and to be just like him, big and strong. I used to like putting on his jackets and shoes, standing in front of the bathroom mirror and pretending to shave, pretending I was the big strong daddy. Now I looked like a little girl in my sundress and sneakers, my hair all curly because of what they did to me at the beauty shop and tiny diamond earrings sparkling in the sunlight. I was so far away from the big boy I was going to become but dad was still proud of me so I thought it must be a good thing and decided not to be afraid or hurt. How would you like to take us girls out for a burger? Mom asked dad. I was one of the girls and dad took the three of us out for burgers, fries, and soft drinks. I felt so happy to be around mom and dad again but couldn't stop feeling excited about spending some more time with grandma, playing dolls with my friends and especially being daddy's girl. 
Once and while in between bites I'd glance up at him and catch him looking at me. He'd smile and tell me that I was so pretty and that I looked just like mom. I couldn't be a little man in my dress but it was so good to know that dad thought I was just as pretty as mom. I had always thought that my mom was the prettiest girl in the whole world so if dad thought I looked like her then being one of the girls was a very good thing to be. Mom and dad only stayed for a couple of days but while dad watched TV and read the paper mom, grandma, and I went shopping. We had a fun time picking out pretty dresses for each other and mom bought me my first pair of stockings like big girls wear. She promised that when she and dad came back to pick me up they'd let me get all dressed up in a fancy dress and my new stockings and they'd take me out to dinner someplace where everyone could see how pretty I looked. For the next couple of weeks I played with my girlfriends and forgot all about the little boy that I was supposed to be. If I was Ronnie I still couldn't play boys games like football or baseball, I wasn't allowed to ride my skateboard anymore, I wasn't supposed to climb trees or do any of the other fun things I used to do. While I was Chrissy though I could do anything any other girl could do so I went swimming in my cute bathing suit, learned how to jump rope, played hopscotch and house, dressed my baby dolls in pretty outfits and pretended they were going on dates or getting married. Just before mom and dad came back one of my friends got a toy makeup kit for her birthday and we all had a fun time putting on lipstick and all the other prettily colored makeup. When mom and dad returned for me two weeks later I was so happy to see them. It had been almost a whole month with grandma and I really missed mom and dad. They had called a couple of times and we talked about the new house they'd chosen, how nice it was, and how they were sure I was going to like everything including my bedroom which they had all fixed up for me. It all sounded so nice but best of all I'd be back with mom and dad again. I guess that I was so used to girls clothes by then that it didn't seem funny that no one made me change out of my pink shorts and top before we left for our new house. Grandma kissed me goodbye, told me how she had enjoyed my staying with her and then mom, dad, and I drove off to our new home. The first thing I noticed was how big our new house was, way bigger than the old one. The backyard was huge and had the biggest set of swings I'd ever seen that wasn't in a playground. Inside mom and dad showed me a big room with a big screen TV and a special table that you could play all kinds of games on. After I finished playing with the new TV and game table I asked where my room was. We walked up steps that curved then down a long hall with carpeting that was so soft I thought I was walking on feathers. Finally we stopped in front of a closed door and mom asked me to close my eyes and not open them until she told me to. I hear the door open and dad gently pushed me into the room. I was bursting with excitement. After seeing how nice the rest of the house was I just knew my bedroom had to be special. You can open your eyes now Chrissy. Mom whispered. I opened my eyes but quickly shut them again hoping that I didn't really see what I thought I saw. When I opened them again though nothing had changed. In the middle of the room was a canopy bed even fancier than the one at grandma's. The bed was covered with a pink sheet with a pink blanket on top of that. Several new baby dolls were carefully arranged on my pillow which was covered by a pink case and the canopy was all ruffles and lace, pink of course. A small vanity with a toy makeup kit, several hairbrushes, ribbons, ponytail holders, and a set of electric curlers was in one corner of the room and a dresser covered with fancy dresser dolls sat across from it. The carpet was white, the walls were painted lavender and the curtains were fancy white ones that any mother would have been thrilled to have for her little girl's room. My new closet was almost as big as my old bedroom and filled with nothing but girl's clothes, some that I had gotten from modeling but a lot more things that I never saw before. This can't be my room, I sobbed. Please mom, this is a girl's bedroom. Of course it is Chrissy, mom said proudly. Your dad and I worked very hard to make this room extra pretty and special just for our little girl. Don't you think it's pretty? But mom, I can't have a room like this. What will my friends think when they see it? Probably that you're a very lucky girl to have such a nice room. Dad showed me the racks filled with shoes at the bottom of my closet. You have enough clothes and shoes in here to play dress up for a month. But what about school, Dad? I couldn't imagine what Mom and Dad were thinking. Why did they fix up my room like a girl's? Mom sat down with me on the bed. Your dad's new job won't pay as much as his last one did honey but with the money from your modeling we'll be able to have this nice house and all the nice things in it. That means you're going to have to keep playing pretend for a little while longer okay? 
I guess that's okay, but why do I have to have a room like this? Couldn't I have boys' stuff instead? Dad sat next to me and put his arm around me. Chrissy, Mom, and I talked this over for a long time. We were worried that since we don't let you play the kind of games that boys play they might start picking on you and calling you a sissy. Mom continued for Dad. That might get your looks as messed up as playing with the boys so to keep that from happening we decided that it would be best to have you stay as Chrissy until you're not modeling anymore. Something wasn't making sense to me but I wasn't sure what it was. But what about school? How can I stay as Chrissy if I have to go to school? Dad walked into my closet and came back holding a jumper and a white blouse that some girls wore to school. You're going to be Chrissy all of the time for a little while longer, sweetie, even at school. Mom and Dad explained everything to me about how I was going to be going back to school as a girl and that I'd have to wear either my jumper or a skirt and blouse uniform. No one knew that I was a boy and no one was supposed to find out, I'd dress and act just like any other girl in the school until my family had enough money saved up and they didn't need me to model anymore. Mom and Dad made me feel so special, my game of pretend was such a big help to my family that I couldn't even think of not playing anymore. I'd be a good girl and go to school in my pretty jumper or skirt and make lots of new girlfriends who like to play dolls or jump rope. I started school a few weeks later just like any other little girl in a jumper and white blouse with a pink fuzzy Barbie book bag over my shoulder. I already knew a couple of the girls in my class and before the end of the first week I knew all of the others. Of course once my friends told their friends about my room, my closet, and all of my baby dolls I had lots of girls who wanted to be my friend. I didn't have any problems going to school as a girl. When Halloween came I dressed up like a princess and this time no one laughed at me, I was a girl in a pretty costume, not a boy in a dress. Soon I forgot all about being a boy and went to sleepovers and birthday parties for my girlfriends. When summer came again we went to the pool in our bathing suits and talked about our favorite singers who happened to be a group of boys cute enough to be girls themselves. I asked mom and dad about being a boy again once after that but they said it wasn't time yet. Dad had a brand new truck, I had a computer and an even better video game system and mom was going back to college. I wasn't in a hurry to go back to being a boy so I never bothered to ask again and they never brought it up. I was making a lot of money as a model because I had a special talent, I was short for a boy my age. Heck it only 4 feet 8 inches I was short for a girl my age which allowed me to keep modeling little girls clothes long after I quit wearing them myself. The companies loved hiring me, I had lots of modeling experience and knew just what to do yet I could look just like a little girl. After a few years mom took me to a doctor who made sure there wasn't anything wrong with me then gave me a shot. Mom made me take pills every day after that to make sure that I didn't start to look like a boy. I didn't want to give up my pretty clothes and all of my toys so I was a very good girl and took the pills. When I was in the 6th grade I signed up to be a cheerleader and had a fun time at all of the football games cheering for the boys who were doing what I used to wish I could do. Once I got used to being a girl I forgot all about silly ideas like playing football. Why get all dirty and hurt like that when I could have just as much fun going shopping for pretty clothes with mom? Sure boys got to climb trees and fences but I thought it was so much better to make my nails look pretty or play with the makeup mom bought for me even if I wasn't allowed to wear it outside yet. I'll never forget how on my 12th birthday mom took me shopping for my first training bra. I had been wearing sort of half t-shirts since I was 10 but mom decided that I had outgrown them and it was now time to get her little girl her first bra. We went to a store and mom let me pick out which kind of bra I liked. I picked out two that I thought were the prettiest and when I couldn't decide on which one was the best mom bought several in each style. When we got home again mom and I dashed off to my room where she showed me how to put on a bra. When I finally got it all hooked up and adjusted mom and I stood staring into the mirror for a few minutes before we both started to cry. It was such a big event in my life, I wasn't a little girl anymore, now I was growing breasts and would soon start to look more and more like a woman. By the time I started high school I had developed a 32-inch bust and bras were a normal part of my life. Having breasts seemed to seal my fate, I wasn't going to ever be a boy again but now I had more boys interested in me than ever before. Mom and Dad wouldn't let me go on dates until I was 16 but that didn't stop me from having several boyfriends and learning how to kiss and pet. 
Mom and Dad gave me a cherry red sports car for my 16th birthday which I put to good use by packing in my girlfriends and cruising for boys. We never missed, my breasts in that car seemed to attract boys from miles around. I guess there's nothing like a pretty blonde in a hot-looking car to get a boy's attention. I'm in my early 30s now and still do occasional modeling jobs when I'm in the mood. I'm a part owner of a modeling agency that I once worked for and I get these teary-eyed flashbacks at the strangest times. Like right now, for instance. I'm wearing a sheer white negligee that leaves nothing to the imagination and has the same effect on men that my red sports car used to have. I'm laying here in bed next to the wonderful, sexy, man I married and we just finished a night of passion-filled lovemaking inspired by my negligee and careful manipulation of a poor unsuspecting man who thought it was all his idea. It's my way of saying thanks for his willingness to take a chance on a poor boy who just wanted to help his family.